All right, folks. So far, we have seen that we can deal with the forces on an object by looking at all the sideways forces. And, of course, we say that this is F net X, which means net means the sum. Whoops, that's an X. The sum of all the forces going sideways. And we can add them up by using positive for those that go to the right and negative numbers for those that go to the left. And we can figure out anything happening on the sideways, lefty, righty direction. We've also learned that we can deal with forces going up and down with what we call F net Y, the sum of all the uppy downy forces. And we use up, positive, and down, negative. And we can deal with that. Now, the problem is, is that in real life, not all forces are conveniently up and down or left and right. So we're gonna look at a new situation where we have an object, say this box, I will give it a mass of 10 kilograms just for fun. That says 10. And this time we're going to pull on it like this. So here's our force, our what we call F applied. And let's say that this F applied is, oh, let's say it's going to be, to keep it simple, 20 newtons. Okay, good. Now, we have to also indicate what the angle is. So we'll put a little thing here. We'll put our little angle sign, and we will write the angle. Let's go 30 degrees. Nice and easy. Okay. Well, just like we did before when we had velocity, if you recall... Uh, when we were doing projectiles, we needed to find out how much of the speed was uppy, downy, and lefty, righty. Remember that? We can do the same thing here with the force. We can figure out how much of this force is sideways and how much is up and down by finding the horizontal and vertical components. So if you recall, that works something like this. We figure out how much of this goes this way and how much of it goes straight up and down. Remember when you draw these arrows, this has to be a right angle, 90 degrees. And the way we get this is by using our trigonometry, 20, sine 30, and on the other side, 20, ooh, cos 30. I've got a little bit of moisture on my screen there that's messing me up. There we go. 20 cos 30. Now, sine 30 is a half, so this is going to just be a 10. And uh, cos 30 is going to be 0.87-ish, give or take. Uh, but we can just do that on our calculators to be safe. Times 20, and we get about 17.3-ish. So, so out of the 20 newtons, 10 newtons is up and down, and 17.3 is lefty-righty horizontal or sideways. And that's how we figure out how much of a force uh, is in each direction. So what we call this one over here, this, this uppy downy one, is we call it F applied Y. It's the uppy downy part. And then this one we call F applied X, the lefty righty part. Okay, so now I'm going to go through a sort of a simple example that sort of throws everything in into the mix that you've learned so far, but also includes something on an angle so you can see how to deal with it. All right, so here we go. We're going to set this up to be uh, something on the ground, and we're going to put a box here, and we'll give it a 20 kilograms. And we're going to pull on the box. Okay. So we're going to pull this way with a force applied of 40, 50, let's go uh, 70 Newtons. I think that should be, actually, let's make it more. Let's go bigger because I want to make sure that it works and we don't have a problem. So let's go big. Go big or go home. Let's make this a um, hundred. 
kittens. Okay, so I'll get my pen back here. A hundred newtons. Okay. And we'll also add in here a coefficient of friction mu, which you learned about before. If you haven't watched the friction video, you have to go back and watch it. And we'll just put 0 0.1 just to make that nice and simple. And the question we want to ask is, uh, what is the acceleration of the box? Now, the interesting thing about forces and net forces is you don't really need to know what the question is. Remember in physics, we're not answering a question. We're describing a scenario. And so it doesn't matter what the question is. It doesn't matter what we're looking for. It will pop out of our description if we do it correctly and we set it up right. I'm just getting rid of some of this junk there. So what we're really trying to do is not answer a question. The question really isn't relevant at this moment. What we're trying to do is describe this situation as best we can. And so to do that, we have to complete our free body diagram. So I'm going to put in some forces with different colors. There will be a force of gravity that pulls down on this object. So we'll call it FG. FG. There we go. There will also be a normal force because if gravity is pulling down, and then the ground must be pushing up. So maybe I'll write that in blue as well because those are both upy downy forces. FN. Bring it down a bit. The normal force. Now, what else might there be? Well, when we look at this coefficient of friction over here, that tells us there must be some friction as, as we try to slide this block across the, the, uh, the ground here. So we're going to put friction. And friction always opposes motion. It's pretty obvious from the way this force is pulling that this block is going to have to move somehow to the right. So friction will, sl will be put pulling to the left and trying to stop it. Friction opposes motion. So there, I've got my free body diagram finished. I can't imagine any other forces that might be acting on this. So uh, let's just carry on. But I do have one problem. FG, FN, and force of friction are all nicely lined up with my uppy-downy and lefty-righty axes. But my applied force is not. And so this is where I have to resolve that into its components. So there will be a horizontal component. It goes like this. And there will be a vertical component that goes like this. This is F applied Y. And the other one is F applied X. Now I have to figure those out. Now, in order to figure it out, one of the things that you have to be given, I forgot to write that in, is of course the angle. So let me squeeze the angle in here in green. So this angle, uh, we'll use our 30 degrees again because it's a nice easy one to work with. Okay, that has to be given as well. Um, you can also solve for the angle, but that's pretty challenging and we're not going to get into that just yet. Okay, so that means I can figure out these F applied X's and Y's. I can get their numbers. Remember, just like we did with projectiles, this side is 100 sine 30, right? Sine 30 is a half, so 100 times a half is 50. And that's 50 newtons because it's part of a force. All right. The F applied X, I'm going to sort of squeeze down over here because it's, this picture is a little bit messy, is 100 cos. 30. If you don't remember how to do that, uh, go back to your notes from projectiles where we learn to resolve vectors into their vertical and horizontal components and, and review that, okay? Uh, there's also videos back, uh, if you go back into unit one, there's videos on that if your notes aren't complete. But I think most of you will remember this. Now, cos 30 is about 0.87, so if we multiply 0.87 by 100, we get about 87. So let's use 87 newtons for that. Okay, your calculator will be point, it'll be 86 point something, something, something. All right. So what we've done here is we figured out how much of the 100 newtons is up and down and how much is left and right, which means we no longer need the 100 newtons. This part is now gone because we've replaced it with its two pieces, this one and this one. 
you'll notice that I drew the these uh, F net or F applied X in red because it's going to go in the F net X section and the other one is in blue because it's going to go in the F net Y section. Okay, so I got my free body diagram. That was step one. Step two was I resolved my crooked vectors, my vectors on angles into their components. Now I did this with one. You could have a question that has two or three or even four forces on angles and you'd have to resolve each one before you could go any further. But now I'm ready to draw or write my F net equations. So I'll stay with the red. Actually, I'll, st I'll start with the blue. And I'll do the F net Y first. There's no real order to this, but sometimes I find that when you're far first starting out, if you do F net Y first, it gives you information that you're going to use later. So it's kind of convenient to start with that. Okay, how do you do F net Y? You just look at the picture and you say, what forces do I have that are up and down? And I see three up and down arrows. They're all in blue. I see an Fn, an Fg, and a 50 Newtons. So I just write them all in. I have Fn, I have Fg, and I have the 50 Newtons, which is the F applied Y. So far, I'm not even worrying about which way they go. Remember our sort of rule of thumb when you're, uh, if I've mentioned this before, I can't remember, but the rule of thumb is when you're putting a net force uh, equation together, add them all up. When you're ready to put in the numbers, then you can also look at your picture and put in pluses or minuses for up and down. That way you'll avoid problems. Okay. Now, do you remember Newton's second law, F net equals MA? Well, that means that F net Y is equal to MA because of Newton's second law. And in particular, we're talking about the up and down acceleration of this block. So I'll keep the little Y there to remind myself. Now, Fn, well, that's just the normal force. But we also know what gravity is, because we've watched a video on gravity, and we've discovered that that is mg. Fg equals mg. So I'm kind of uh, replacing these things with what they're equal to. And the F applied Y, well, I have a number for that. It's 50 Newtons, right? But what I'm going to do first is keep it as a letter, because I'm still writing a letter equation. Now, I want you to notice something. I'm going to go down below here. I, in this net force equation, I have used two smaller equations, but I've used them sort of vertically going down. I've used F net equals MA. Oops. And I've used it right here by replacing F net with MA. I've also used FG equals MG by using, and I've replaced it right here. So I've used those two smaller equations within this by substitution. And that's how we use them. Rather than figure out the gravity all by itself, you could do all this on one page and then put the number over here and figure out this all by itself and have a messy solution. What we have here is a very organized way of writing this sort of essay on forces and describing everything. So we are using these equations, but we're using them inside this big net force structure, and that's what makes it so powerful and convenient. So let me erase that stuff now, and we'll go back to where we were. Now we're going to put in some numbers. Okay, so what are our numbers going to be? Well, we can put in the mass, which is 20 kilograms. Now, let's think about AY. What that stands for is the acceleration of this box up and down. Let's look at it. Well, it's highly unlikely that this box is going to shoot up into the air, or it's not certainly going to dig itself down into the ground. So if we're just looking at up and down, it would appear that this is not going to accelerate either way. I can also look at the 50 newtons right here and compare that to the gravity. Well, the gravity is, is mg, and if you multiply 20 kilograms times 9.8, you're going to get 196 newtons. That's a lot more than 50, which means the weight of this, the gravity pulling down, is a lot stronger than what's pulling up, which means it will not go up. So all of this that we're thinking about tells us that the AY, the acceleration in the up and down direction, is a zero. Now many of you will just 
Memorize this. And you'll get into the habit of writing a zero every time. But you can't. You have to go to the picture and you have to look at this force and this force and you have to compare them and you have to see what's happening. It's true that in almost every example we do, AY will be zero, but it's not a rule. It's not something you can just memorize. You have to look at the picture and decide if AY is zero. Okay, what else have we got? Well, we don't really know anything about FN. It's just FN and there's nothing else. So we'll leave it as a letter. But we do know something about gravity. As I said before, Fg equals Mg. And so M is 20 newtons, or sorry, 20 kilograms. And we use our 9.8. You'll also notice I'm not using negative 9.8. And the reason for that is because when I do F net, equations. I'm going to let the picture tell me what's plus and what's minus. I'm not going to try to force numbers to be what they don't want to be. If you look at the picture, gravity is a downward force, which means it must be negative. So now I can put a negative sign in front for down. Now it's true that if I left this as a plus and I put negative 9.8, it would make the whole thing negative and it would work out. Problem is, there's going to be situations down the road where parts of gravity might actually be positive. Weird, but true. And so to prepare ourselves for that, we don't want to get into the habit of always using negative 9.8. So when we do mg, we use 9.8, and then we make a conscious decision by looking at the picture right here as to what direction the gravity should be. Okay, now... What do we have next? F net or F applied Y. I go back up here. It's an upward force, so I'm using a plus, and it's 50. All right. Now you can see what we can do. We can solve. So 0 equals Fn minus 196 plus 50. 0 equals Fn 196 plus 50. If that's a negative 196, that would be negative 146, I believe, which means we have Move that to the other side, 146 newtons is the normal force. Look at that, something popped out. It's not the answer to our question yet, but it's useful information. And usually the normal force does pop out of the F net Y equation. It pops out of this, and it has. Okay, now what? Well, we still have F net X to deal with. So let's change our color to red, and let's do F net X. What do we got? Go back to the picture. I see two forces. I see this one, which is going to the right, and I see this one going to the left. Those are the only sideways or horizontal forces. So we have F applied X and the force of friction. Okay. Now, F net equals MA. We're using that equation again, but we're using it inside this bigger equation. F applied X stays the same for now. Whoops, sorry. And now, force of friction. We're going, to, we're going to use another equation that you've learned, and that is that the force of friction equals mu Fn. Remember that one. Isn't it handy that we figured out what Fn is from the first part? That's going to be great. Okay, so we're going to use that equation, sorry, by uh, substitution right now. And I'm going to write in here, force of friction is F, uh, mu Fn. Okay, so that I used right there. Okay, now let's put in the numbers and the directions. What's the mass? 20 kilograms. Now, what about the sideways A? I should have written here just to remind you, we tend to not do this because we get sloppy, but this is the sideways acceleration, or AX, right? And it's because we're doing F net X. Okay, what do we got? Well, I don't know. There's nothing in this question that actually tells me if it's going to be zero or not. I don't know that. I can't assume. So, and for, of course, if the question was asking what is the acceleration of the box, this would be the acceleration they were referring to. So we're going to have to leave this as an A. We're not going to be able to turn that a x into anything else. F applied x though, we got a number, 87 newtons. Let's put it in, 87 newtons. And it's to the right, so I'm going to use a positive number. 
Now, mu. Mu Fn. Well, mu was given way back at the start as 0 0.1. So we'll use that. So mu, 0 0.1. And Fn was conveniently figured out right here when we finished our F net y equation, 146. And which way is friction going? I must look at my picture. Sometimes friction is left, but sometimes it's right. There's nothing you can memorize. You've got to look at the picture. It's going to the left. So the friction is a negative number, and I put that in as well. Now I'm ready to solve, and you can sense already what's going to happen here. That acceleration is going to pop out. 20 times ax equals 87. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to subtract uh, 14.6, right? And we can figure out then, so 20 ax. And this is going to be... Um, Uh, very, uh, well, it's going to be a slightly smaller positive number. That's what we have to remember. So 87, and then we're going to take away 14.6, which is going to be 72.4. Okay, and notice how it's positive. And that makes sense. If you get a negative answer here, let's say you work through this and you got a negative answer. That would happen if your friction was bigger than your F applied X, right? Well, you look at your picture. How could this go backwards? How could it go left? And that would indicate that there's something fishy going on. Either the friction is too strong and you can't pull the, the object and the acceleration would have to be zero because you can't beat the friction, or uh, you made a mistake with your signs, so you have to double check. You can't always just trust that the math is on the same page as you are. You always have to interpret your math as you go and make sure that it's telling you what you want it to tell you. AX then is 72.4 divided by 20, which would give us, uh, let's see, if we divide that by 2, 3.6-ish, 3.62. And of course, since we're solving for acceleration, this unit would be meters per second squared. And now that's popped out. And remember, we said originally that we were going to try to figure out how this box would accelerate, and we have. So it's really the same as all the other net force equations. The only difference is we had to do this mess up here where we had to first resolve the force into its horizontal and vertical components and a piece of that force showed up in both of the equations. And that's the difference. So when you're dealing with forces on an angle, that's how you do it. And there will be some examples uh, in the worksheets and in the questions where you have to do that. And uh, I was watching the videos you already have, and I, I don't recall any of them specifically going through this process with you. So I just made this one up as an extra for you, just in case you're stuck on that. Okay, good luck. And